Hello once again, it's Matthias to Future Fast Forward. I hope you have a quiet, peaceful weekend and not being bombarded by the whole load of bullshit coming out from the PAC Vice Chairman Tan Sing Giao. I have much difficulty today to deliver to you an address on the issue of the finding of PAC, the Parliament Public Accounts Committee. The statements that came out from the Vice Chairman is beyond my imagination, and I believe it's also beyond imagination, as it is so inconsistent and contradictory to the rest of the statements published in the own publication, the report to Parliament. Nevertheless, let us pause here for a while and examine what and why Tai Sing Giao made the statement he made on the 7th of April this year. This is what he said in summary to a press statement. He has stated that the Prime Minister, Finance Minister, Najib, is not guilty of any wrongdoing at all because he was not involved in the company's dealings and he was just a mere chairman of the advisory board. And I quote to you what he said. I think those are the board of directors and management and those who run the company are the people we have to probe. That will be the correct thing to do, legally speaking. How can you take action against people who have done nothing? This is the rule of law because you can't condemn a person until he has proven guilty. The key words are the last sentence in the press statement. You can't condemn a person until it has proven, been proven guilty. Now who is this Tan, Ging, Tan uh, Sing Giao, this vice chairman of PAC? He's a man, a key member of, um, of a DAP. And AMNO um, throughout the years has condemned the DAP members relentlessly as liars, racists, chauvinists. And recently they've called these leaders as traitors having followed Tun Mahathir in launching this is declaration. However, now the leaders of AMNO are so gratified and relieved that a member of DAP, which they call a liar, a traitor before, is now squeaky clean as an angel because he has found Najib not guilty. So in this finding by Tang Sing Giao, once labelled a traitor and a liar, a lie or a truth and the ugly truth. Najib is not guilty. But the rest, the board of directors, the former CEO, are guilty. But for some strange reason, Najib is not guilty. And the entire AMNO leadership has latched on on this one statement. Ignore the rest of the findings of the PAC. Why? Why latch on to this one statement of Tan Sing Giao? So let me ask you a simple question. Having read, and I'm sure you have read the various statements in the mass media, in the social media. What would make such a person, such as Tan Sing Giao, make the finding that Najib is not guilty? There can be only three conclusions following from this statement. 
one is either very stupid or pretend to be stupid. Two, he does not understand the law or the evidence that was presented to the PAC. And thirdly, is what we call an unknown intelligence asset. Now he can't be stupid because he's a very experienced lawmaker, a member of parliament of several terms. Neither can we say that he doesn't answer the law or the evidence because he said, and he's made a finding, Najib is not guilty of any wrongdoing, but the rest of the members of the board of directors and the former CEO is guilty. So he understands guilt, crimes, or misconduct. But I can assure you that he's not stupid, that he knows the law. Therefore, the only conclusion is he is the intelligent asset of Amno. Let me explain the word intelligence asset. This expression refers to person or persons who do who, who though they are not members of the of the or the uh, the other party such as Amno or the ruling party, by his actions and words supports or corroborates the action words of the ruling party. That's why it's called an asset. He can do things for the benefit of the ruling party of Amno. And by his so-called finding that Najib is not guilty of any crime or misconduct, he has thereby attempted by one broad stroke to save the neck of Najib and thereby Amno. So it's therefore an asset, an intense asset of Amno. Isn't it strange? Just pause, bro. In my previous speeches, I said that Joe Law, the scumbag, the young punk, the traitor, leader of the gang of rapists, together with his Malaysian and Arab counterparts, have raped the country. A China Kwai, a China man has raped our country as the major accomplice. And we have called that this man must account for his action, for his crimes. But no action is taken against him or his accomplices and the mastermind. And now another Chinaman comes to the forefront and says, Voila! Najib is not guilty. Do you think it's strange? Why rely on a China man to declare Najib innocent? Why 7th April 2016, the last day of parliament to present the report? So there's no type of debate. And the chairman, Mr. Hassan Harfin, since he was sick, he can't present the report until next month in May when Parliament resists. But after Tan Sing Gao do his theatrics and declare his verdict that Najib is not guilty, out of the blues, Hassa comes out and gives press statements and echo the finding of the Vice Chairman. Remarkable, isn't it? Now let's test whether the statement of Tang Sing Giao or the chairman, Hassan Arifin, stand scrutiny. Because there's only one statement, a general statement. Let's find out what else the, the PAC report states. Firstly, the sum of 700 million, the first tranche that was remitted from Malaysia, and the second tranche, the sum of 330 million, was misappropriated to Good Star, a company not involved 
in the patrol Saudi what and we joint venture. It was also a finding of PAC that the one MDB board did not approve the remittance of seven hundred million to Good Star. Who did? I put to you, Najib did. Yet, Tan Sin says there is no evidence that Najib is involved. Surely, if the board of directors did not approve, someone must have given the approval and the instruction to remit the monies from Malaysia to first J.B. Morgan in America, to Deutsche Bank, and then to Abri Corps, and finally to Good Star. Najib did it. So why did he cover up? Secondly, another huge sum was paid out. A sum of 3.51 billion was paid to a British Virgin Island company called Arba Investment, PJS Limited. This was another scam. And today, 1MDB, or the board of directors, or Najib, could prove to PAC that this company, Arba PJS Limited, is actually a subsidiary or linked to the official Abu Dhabi firm, Abba Investment PJS, or to the International Petroleum Investment Corp, IPIC. These two, Abba Investment PJS and the International Petroleum Investment Corporation, are the official sovereign funds of the Abu Dhabi government. But how clever of Joe Lowe and his accomplice to borrow the full name of ARPA PGS, but at the word limited, and have it registered with an offshore tax haven, BVI. Thirdly, there was no accounting for the US 9440 million worth of units so-called units that was deposited in the BIZ Bank in Singapore. You will recall, sometime last year, Arukanda, the CEO of 1MDB, declared that from bank statements, he saw, he could confirm, there was cash in the bank, BSI Bank in Singapore. Subsequently, the bank says there was not correct there's no cash. To today, there's no accounting for this 940 million. What are these units? Where did it come about? No answer. Fourthly, there's another sum, 1.56 billion investments that was transferred or paid out to a wholly owned subsidiary of 1MDB, 1MDB Global Investment Limited which has also not been verified by the Auditor General in their report. Neither has any witness come forward from our MDB as to how this money, US 1.56 billion, has been utilised. Fifth, to the horror of everyone, it's not been disclosed that one MDB Board of Directors had never held a meeting and you know who said that? A star witness. The Secretary General of the Ministry of Finance, Sirika Muhammad, Irwan Sirga Muhammad. He said that the Board of Advisors never had the meeting. And that the Ministry of Finance was completely in the dark about 1MDB's operations. Let me quote what he said. He said, we do not know about what MDB's operations. We don't know. We read it about, we read it all in the newspapers. Can you imagine? He only knew about the operations from the newspapers. They were totally in the dark. Why? And again, it was disclosed to the PAC that by 
Section 117, Article 117 of the Memorandum of Article Association 1 MDB, total power was given to the hands of the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister Najib. He's a sole authority to approve, to transfer monies, and to give any make any decisions relating to investments of one MDB. And this particular article also forbids representation from the Minister of Finance to sit on the board of one MDB even though 1MDB is a 100% owned company of the Treasury. Now, isn't that odd? A company that's owned by, by the Minister of Finance has no say. Why? Because the Article of Association 117 gives sole authority to the Prime Minister. So if the Prime Minister and Finance Minister Najib has a sole authority, how can Tang Sing Giao says He's not involved. It's not possible, is it? Right? There's nothing to correct him. These are facts. But he glossed over. Additionally, the sixth point, the MOF, Minister of Finance, is unaware that KBMG, the auditor's appointment to audit what MDB accounts was sacked. Did you know? They found later that he was sacked by Najib as finance minister because KBMG was querying too much about the accounts. It was not convenient for them to be remain to remain as auditors, so they were sacked and replaced by another firm of accountants, Deloitte. And this was confirmed on the 17th of June 2015 by KBMG. Right? that they were sacked and the person who sacked them as auditors was Najib because he signed it he signed it so how can you say there's no evidence against any misconduct or, and, and or criminality of Najib why did Tang Sing Giao not query the basis for the sacking of KBMG by Najib. Seventh, and very interestingly, before he was removed as chairman of PAC, the former chairman, Nor Jaslan Muhammad, said on May 19th, the first hearing of the PAC, he says, one MDB has the own source authority, but not from the Ministry of Finance but directly from the Prime Minister. And the Prime Minister also, as the Finance Minister, is the direct authority. So they bypassed the government due process framework. This is all, this is words. No Justin has said clearly on the May 19th, the first hearing of PAC, that the Ministry of Finance was bypassed, the matter was controlled by Najib directly. Again, on 11th of June 2015, Noor Jaslan made this statement. There was a lack of one MDB financial statements for the year ending March 2015 by leaving a 15-month gap for PACE's investigations. Since many events have taken place during this period, let's pause here. Without those accounts, PAC would be blindsided. Can you imagine the accounts for March 215, for the year ending March 215, to do today has not been presented. It was first extended to September 215, and then extended to March 216. And now we are told those accounts can be only be presented in September 216. So therefore, 
the, the investigation by PAC cannot be complete when accounts are not before them. And yet, President Gao says there are no evidence of wrongdoing. There's no criminality. And this is echoed by the dumb skull chairman, Hassan Arifin. So let's pause. If the board of directors are bypassed, if the board of advisors never hold a meeting, what does it mean? And I've quoted to you section article or one article one one seven of the memorandum of the Articles of Association that Najib is a sole decision maker who has signed all the resolutions, all right, and approved all the deals, all the transactions. So he is in the know. All right. He invested 1.83 billion in the failed Petro Saudi joint venture. He also borrowed monies. All right. I think about 3.0 or 5 billion from Goldman Sachs. He overpaid, sorry, I think he bought more than that, I think 6.5 billion of bonds from Goldman Sachs. He also overpaid, I think, about 12 over billion for power assets. He approved all these things. Hence, the Prime Minister has direct complicity in all the above hanky-panky. And today, one MDB, entire board of directors, the key officials of one MDB have refused to submit all the foreign bank statements. Those accounts have been frozen by foreign authorities. So how is it possible for PAC to clear the Prime Minister of wrongdoing, to find not guilty? When critical evidence are not before the PAC, just like MACC, when they submitted their report to the Attorney General Chambers, to the Attorney General, they say their report is incomplete because they don't have access to foreign bank accounts and request for mutual legal assistance. Likewise, PAC says they don't have the foreign bank statements, they have no access to them, therefore, PAC could not have completed the investigation. But lo and behold, this China Kwai Tang Sing Giao make a statement that you can't condemn a person until he has proven guilty. There were enough evidence before PAC to show complicity and criminality. But he chose to close one eye, in fact, close both eyes, and pretend nothing exists. Now, I would like to read to you a very important statement by Mr. Mark Branson, the CEO of the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority, which was issued on the 7th of April. So it cannot be a coincidence that the PAC report was also issued on the 7th of April 2016. I will submit to all of you, fellow Malaysians, that PAC rushed to present on the 7th of April because they knew that there will be a statement coming out by Mark Branson of Switzerland saying that 1MDB is a prime example of money laundering. I read to you, if I may. Quote, We know that suspect funds also pass through banks headquartered in the US the UK and the Middle East. Transactions were also processed 
via many other international financial centers. There are three particularly troubling aspects of these cases. One, these are not events from years ago. The money was still being accepted until quite recently. We're not talking about legally issues, legacy, legacy issues. From what it looks like, we're not dealing here with shades of grey. The evidence points to clear cases of corruption. The extent of the cases and the sums involved are vast. We are talking about cash flows amounting to several billion US dollars, with individual transactions running into hundreds of millions. Those are significant sums of money for different nations, like Malaysia and Brazil. So here you are, in the Swiss authorities, Swiss authorities, has made a finding that one MDB was involved with money laundering and corruption. But how can now PC says there's no misconduct? There's only gross mismanagement and the investigation should be directed at the board of directors who have resigned very conveniently at this time and not before and against the former CEO. But lo and behold, they wash their hands pointing finger at Najib. Wash your hands. They will not point the finger at Najib. Why? When the ever so clear cut, when the Swiss authorities have pointed out what NDB is involved in money laundering and corruption. Billions of money was sloshing through their banks and to other financial centers. Is it a comedy? As soon after Tan Sin Gao's statement, the Azalinas, the Ismail Sabris, the Raman Dalans, Nasri, all compounding out, eager to hail the pronouncement of not guilty by Tan Sin Gao, who previously was condemned by these leaders as a liar, <coughs> excuse me, as a chauvinist, a racist. So why, <coughs> excuse me, why now to give credence to a man he condemned? How convenient. I put to you that Tan Jin Giao is not what he is. It's a long-term asset for UMNO. I think it's young and the AP must really examine the history of this man. But this man has betrayed our country, is complicit in the cover-up of the crimes of Najib. <coughs> but we are told by the authorities that we cannot comment on the final PAC. To do so is seditious. I challenge Tan Sin Giao. I hope you hear me. I challenge you to a public debate on the PAC report. I dare you to debate with me. You are a scumbag, a traitor of this country, and complicit in a cover up. Okay? And I hope you will not hide under the privilege or immunity as a member of parliament. Come out in public and debate with me. I will expose you for what you are a man who turned a blind eye to the crimes of this country. You are a disgrace to your community. You are a disgrace to DAP. You are a disgrace to this nation. So fellow Malaysians, do not be disappointed. Do not feel dissatisfied what happened over last week. This is to be expected. This shows the desperation of the financial gang rapists who have nowhere to turn to and using every means to cover their crimes. As before, let me assure you 
that we will prevail and we will win. We will prevail, why? Because we have surrendered our will to God Almighty and we have absolute faith that He will guide us, protect us and defend us in all circumstances against all adversity and enemies. And finally, truth, the ugly truth will prevail because they cannot whitewash or black out those key findings of facts which are summarized for you just now. All right? Have faith. Sooner or later, the entire edifice will collapse. Our country is broken, as I said before. Amno is broken. And this is a further evidence that Amno is broken because the entire leadership is so desperate as to cling on. Can you imagine? Cling on to one statement of an enemy who says, their leader is clean. Can you believe that? Even a child would believe that. With that, I would like to conclude by saying, once again, fear not our enemies, fear not the government, fear not these criminals. We will prevail and we will win. Thank you.